Did you know that more than a million people are killed every year because of secondhand smoke? A WHO report shows that one in three countries now have policies in place to create 100% smoke-free indoor spaces. How do smoke-free indoor spaces help your health and our economies? Here to talk about it today is Dr. Kirsten Schott. Welcome, Kirsten. Kirsten, talk to us about secondhand smoke and how that impacts our bodies. Scientific research shows that there's no safe level of exposure to tobacco smoke. Of the about 7,000 compounds in tobacco smoke, we know that at least 69 are known to cause cancer in humans. And because as a bystander, you inhale the same toxic substances as the smoker, your risk of developing lung cancer increases by 20 to 30%. And even brief exposure to tobacco smoke can damage the lining of your blood vessels and make the blood platelets stickier. And this can increase your risk of coronary heart disease and stroke also by 20 to 30 percent. And as with active smoking, the longer the duration and the higher the frequency of exposure to tobacco smoke, the higher your risk of developing lung cancer and cardiovascular disease. And with Mita, you mentioned in your introduction, more than one million people every year die of secondhand smoke exposure. And these deaths are by people who are unfortunate enough to be exposed to secondhand smoke, either in the workplace or in other indoor public places or in public transport. And this is why it's so important for governments to protect their population. And they can do this by adopting complete smoke-free laws that make all public places indoor completely smoke-free. And as WHO, we work with all governments to adopt these strong smoke-free laws. And it's wonderful that already 74 of 194 member states have put in place these comprehensive smoke-free legislation. So, Kirsten, the tobacco industry scares governments that if you institute measures like smoke-free spaces, uh, restaurants and establishments and businesses will see their revenues go down. Is this true? Well, the argument is often put forward by the tobacco industry because they want to scare governments that these measures, smoke-free laws, will hurt business. But it's not true, actually. It's a myth. Um, but from a tobacco industry perspective, you can understand why they do this, because they know that smoke-free laws are very effective at reducing tobacco use, and this is not in their interest. And they do that because every second smoker dies because they use the product. Wait, so you're, is that true, that tobacco kills half the people? who consume tobacco. Yeah, it's the only legal product available on the market that kills half of its users. That is true. But coming back to your question, rigorous studies around the world have shown that smoke-free laws have either a positive effect on the hospitality industry or at least a neutral effect. And opinion polls, including smokers, by the way, show that smoke-free laws are very popular. People love to go out at night, eat in smoke-free restaurants and go to smoke-free bars. So Kirsten, WHO has waged a battle against the tobacco industry. Talk to us about how these interventions like smoke-free spaces and others have saved lives. Yes, so unfortunately the tobacco industry often stops governments to adopt these uh, life-saving interventions. And every delay caused by big tobacco translates into death by smokers, non-smokers and tobacco users. And to counter the tobacco industry, 20 years ago, in 2003, all WHO member states unanimously adopted the WHO Framework Convention on Tobacco Control. This is a treaty to protect the population from the devastating effects of tobacco use. And it's not only health effects, but also economic, social and environmental effects. Because tobacco is not only the biggest public health threat the world has ever faced, it's also killing our planet. To produce 300 cigarettes, one tree is cut down. So tobacco farming accounts for about 5% of global deforestation. And quitting smoking really pays off. After 20 minutes already, your blood pressure and your heart rate drop. After 12 hours, the carbon monoxide level in your blood drops to normal. 
Within one to 12 weeks, your circulation and your lung function improves. And after one to nine months, your coughing and shortness of breath reduces. And smoke-free spaces really encourage tobacco users and smokers to try to quit. And we know that the more often smokers try to quit, the higher the chance of success. Thank you, Kirsten. That was Science in 5 today. Until next time then, stay safe, stay healthy and stick with science.